So now it's time for the last couple styles of jazz we're going to talk about. Cool jazz, free jazz, and jazz rock. It's a pretty short lecture because these styles are pretty easy to describe, so hopefully you'll understand them well and be able to listen to the examples and enjoy them. Cool jazz emerged in the 1940s and 1950s. It's a type of jazz that was related to the bebop genre. Bebop, as you remember from the last lecture, developed in the 1940s as well. But it was super popular, but there were many jazz artists and many settings for audiences in which bebop was too loud, too complex, and too fast. People wanted and to perform and people wanted to create music that was calmer, more relaxed, and so we get cool jazz. Sometimes it's also called smooth jazz today. Cool jazz tended to have longer pieces of music with a more calm sound. Cool jazz artists almost always wrote arrangements of old tunes instead of creating completely new compositions. They did this because cool jazz was meant to slow down, to calm down and relax already popular pieces of music. They would take bebop melodies or swing melodies and they'd take the tempo and they'd slow it down. They'd play it on really relaxed sounding instruments with beautiful calm tone colors and they'd create this sense of coolness in the music that was very relaxing and easy to work during and this music eventually became the first type of background music. Cool jazz incorporated new instruments into jazz style, including the French horn, flute, and cello, just to give you a few examples. Cool jazz didn't limit itself to the typical jazz sound. It wanted to diversify the jazz sound, and it succeeded. Some of the most important figures for cool jazz are Miles Davis, Stan Getz, Lester Young, and Lenny Tristano. Me these men actually sometimes would combine together to form a small cool jazz band, but more often than not, they worked as band leader or as soloist for a group of players creating cool jazz music. This is a painting done of Lester Young, one of the best saxophonists of the era. And I've mentioned Lester Young before. He was famous throughout the century for being able to perform in many different styles of jazz. But he is most well known in the 40s and 50s for his cool jazz interpretations of other jazz style songs. This one, called I Guess I'll Have to Change My Plan, is one of my favorites. It's a great song, it's easy to listen to, and it sounds smooth. It sounds calm and cool. And that's what really identifies this as cool jazz rather than any other style. Take a listen and see whether you can really hear what I'm talking about with this style of music. After the eras of Dixieland, swing, bebop, and cool jazz, comes something very different. Emerging around 1960, in reaction to how earlier styles were all basing songs on a theme and variation form, comes free jazz, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's jazz that has been freed from all the rules. This should sound pretty similar to what happened in 20th century classical music, especially after 1945. Some people even compare free jazz to chance music, like what you heard by John Cage. Jazz artists, even though they had a wide variety of styles to choose from, sometimes felt a little choked by the amount of rules and regulations in how harmony and rhythm functioned in jazz. And so just like the 20th century classical artists, they begin to question how that structure was put together and to break the boundaries and the rules. They wanted more freedom, they gave themselves more freedom. Instead of maintaining the length of the melody or maintaining a harmonic progression underneath a theme, they stopped doing that and developed free jazz. Free jazz is defined as a style of jazz that is not based on regular forms or established chord patterns. So it can really sound like pretty much any style of jazz and it always sounds improvisational. Almost every moment of free jazz sounds like it's made up on the spot, whether it is or isn't, because it's never based on the same set of rules. You may have one melody on which the piece is based, but 
you never really hear just variation. You simply hear the music continue and continue and continue because it simply keeps changing because there are no rules. The most important artists in this genre are are Ornette Coleman and John Coltrane, two really important jazz artists that did do music in other genres, but really established free jazz as an amazing popular style of jazz. Free jazz, though, in comparison to all the other styles of jazz we're talking about, was considered to be the least popular of the popular styles because it is pretty hard to listen to on a regular basis. But free jazz is one of the things that when you go to jazz clubs or bars where jazz musicians are playing today, is something you hear all the time. Our twelfth listening example for this week, don't worry, there's only one more, um, is a song by Ornette Coleman, and it's from his first free jazz album. He recorded an entire album called This Is Our Music of Free Jazz and was one of the only artists in the century to continually produce free jazz albums. It's really what he excelled at and loved the most. This song is called Blues Connotation. Notice how you do not hear melodies or harmonies repeat, how the music is just continuous. The only aspect of the act actual music that's continuous and steady is that the beat is in the cymbals and the bass. So on to our last style. This of course is the latest style of jazz we're going to talk about called jazz rock or jazz fusion or simply fusion. As jazz developed there were other popular styles developing, and we're going to talk about some of those styles, such as the TV and film music and rock and roll. But jazz did not get pretentious like classical music and try and separate itself from these other genres. Instead, it actually decided it wanted to fuse with these other styles. And that's how we get jazz rock. There were artists that were jazz musicians, and there were artists that were rock musicians that really loved the popular trends in the other type of music, and they really wanted to combine the two. So starting in the late 1960s, when rock and roll was still pretty young, but jazz was firmly established as a popular style, both genres and the artists in those genres were so influenced by each other that they developed their own fused style. It's a style that used jazz improvisational techniques and the jazz sound and tone colors and combined it with the forms, rhythm, and tone colors of rock and roll. That meant instead of just using acoustic instruments, they could use either electric or acoustic or a mix. It also meant that the bass player, who had either been a part of the rhythm section or the actual rhythm section unto itself, took on a more melodic solo role for the first time in jazz because bass was so important to rock and roll music. It also meant that there were larger percussion sections in fusion music that included world instruments because if you look at the development of jazz, more and more percussion was being added into the mix and if you look at rock and roll, which we'll talk about in a few weeks, they used a lot of influence from world music and used a lot of world instruments. The best jazz artists that created jazz rock or fusion music included Miles Davis, who we've talked about briefly before, Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea, Joe Zawinul, and Wayne Shorter. The best rock artists, of course rock bands, that fused the two style were the groups Blood, Sweat, and Tears in Chicago. There are other ones that um, occur later, there's Tower of Power and a few others that are a lot of fun. And if you want to listen to some of these guys and some of these bands, have a blast. The style is still popular today and continues to inspire rock and jazz artists to create new and exciting styles as well as to continue to create fusion music. So have fun listening to whatever you find outside of class. The actual last listening example we're going to listen to is called Miles Runs the Voodoo Down. This is a piece composed and performed by Miles Davis. It's from his album, Bitches Brew, which was one of the first jazz fusion albums ever recorded. He had 12 musicians performing along with him in his band, and it's really a 
fun piece of music and you're going to really see and hear elements in this piece of rock and roll and jazz. And when we talk about rock and roll later, we'll revisit this piece briefly just to see whether you can then hear the rock and roll influences a little better once you know what they're actually described as. Have fun listening to this. Keep in mind that there's a lot more to jazz than we can cover in one week. That's why I've included so many lists of the artists and the styles, so that you can look up these artists and performers and composers and arrangers and listen to the styles you liked from the week. And you can do your own research to find the other types of jazz that are out there to listen to. Go see some live jazz at a club. There's a couple in South Texas in the Valley in McAllen. There's some great scenes for jazz in Austin and Houston and Corpus Christi even. So for those of you who are living further afield in the state, find some jazz clubs in your area and go and enjoy. And for those of you that are down here in Brownsville or in the Valley, head out to McAllen or Edinburgh and go to some of those jazz clubs that are out there and have a great time. Make sure to hop on the discussion board this week and to do the assignment. They're both due at the usual time, Sunday at 11.30. Next week, we're going to move on to film music, which I think will be a lot of fun for everybody. The assignment this week is some short answer questions. I'm not looking for great formatting, but please make sure you spell your responses correctly and try and keep your responses under 200 words apiece. It should be a very easy, quick assignment to be able to do in about an hour as long as you have read listen to the lectures, and listen to the musical examples. And the group discussion board should be fun for you as well. As long as you respond to both threads, you'll get full credit for the week. Have fun and enjoy your jazz.